Hi everyone, again welcome to this uh, lecture. Uh, today we will be continuing the Linux networking lecture. Um, before we begin actually let me recap uh, what we uh, did last uh, in the last lecture. Um, we actually started talking about the networking and we defined what the network is. Essentially the networking is uh, how multiple computer or components they communicate with each other. Um, we started actually like I mean we then uh, also uh, um, um, corrected our terminology these com computer components they are all called nodes and we will be talking about nodes. Uh, and then we also talked about the four main characteristics of the network uh, which is the size which uh, we measure as uh, van, LAN, etc. Uh, topology like various types of topology, various uh, types of configuration how they are all uh, connected uh, physically and then there is a physical uh, characteristic also which is uh, what kind of wiring is used whether it is fiber channel, whether it is uh, copper. Um, we do it in terms of um, 10 base T or 100 base T kind of uh, measurements uh, and then finally the protocol essentially how they talk to each other which is uh, TCP is one of them, UDP is the other one. Um, so we talked about this and then one of the concepts that we introduced um, during this uh, lecture was this uh, open systems interconnection uh, model or OSI. Uh, which um, divides the whole um, networking into the seven layers from with varying degrees of complexity. The application layer where you have a complete visibility of the application, uh, where you are launching the program, you are sending the program to a, a particular uh, network and then once that program is um, when you decide to send and to hit the send button how they it is then transmitted that is what uh, the OSI deals with like uh, the various layers are the presentation layer then, then it goes to the session layer and then it is the transport uh, network data link and then the physical, physical is where the actual communication happens with, through the wires and basically the bits are transmitted and we do not even call it bits, it is basically just the voltage. Um, in fact a uh, way of looking at OSI is from the bottom to the top. Uh, which is the normal way that uh, people always uh, try to teach uh, because it is easier to understand that way. So you talk about like how the bits are transmitted uh, like with voltages then the data link layer which essentially uh, forms the, um, the framing of the, the data um, then it goes into the network layer where it is basically it has the IP forwarding uh, also built in. Um, and then um, it goes into the transport layer which is uh, the uh, which offers the end to end uh, offers end to end reliability um, of the system. And then the upper layers are the session layers um, and presentation and application where the data is aggregated more and then when it reaches the application um, it, it uh, the computer actually sees the complete picture or the, the full data, data set. Um, all the headings, everything like I mean, it's eliminated and then now we get the pure data. Uh, so, example, um, we also talked about how the OSI model differs from TCP/IP. Uh, the TCP/IP, the, the top three layers are combined in one, um, and then um, essentially the all the the upper level applications like mail, web, etc., they reside in the application layer. And then progressively like I mean you add more bits um, basically you break up the data and then you put uh, how you broke up uh, those kind of uh, roadmaps into those uh, broken up pieces and then send as piecemeal into the various um, uh, layers below and then the layers below then they can communicate. Um, we also saw like um, there was um, um, 16 uh, or essentially like 5 um, Words, um, uh, sorry, six uh, 32 bit words uh, which constitutes the IP header, um, which is used by the IP layers essentially, like that is this uh, network layer to forward the, uh, the messages. Um, and then we also saw, like, I mean, how um, the 
various uh, points differ essentially like how a host is different from a router and how far higher the chain that the, the, the um, message has to travel before it is uh, distinguished and then it is routed to the appropriate destination. So um, we saw some of those uh, examples. Uh, I also wanted to put this picture here which kind of summarizes all our discussions uh, so far. Um, as you know like I mean the ethernet layers are the lowermost layers um, which then the, this is the link layers essentially which goes into the, the network layer which is the IP layer and then uh, you have the transport layer which is the TCP layer. So these are all the buried under um, the, the, the bottom of the chain. Uh, whereas uh, the kernel actually like has all these things basically. So all these correspond to the the kernel side, and then the user just sees the top level. And we also saw an example of um, um, a client-server architecture, where um, the client opens up uh, some communication channel. Um, it actually opens up something called a socket. Um, uh, it, when when it um, so essentially like the, the the server creates a socket, it binds an address to the socket, and then it it basically waits at that point. Whenever the client wants to communicate, client also creates a socket, and these sockets are matching, so basically it can connect. And once it sends that message to that appropriate socket, and uh, the server has the socket. It sends a sends back another message uh, to accept that uh, socket. At that point, the connection is made, and then the packets are sent uh, one by one into the server, and then server services, and then it sends back those packets as well. So the send and receive goes hand in hand. Uh, this uh, simple client-server model um, is used in many uh, applications. One of the key things that we learned. Was also the HTTP, uh, how um, we open up a website or essentially like when we make a server uh, service request, uh, how that gets um, gets into the ser server and then how server services that request. So in the data centers, you will find this uh, used a lot. Uh, in fact, one of the structures of the data center um, is that. Basically, they they also divide into layers. There, um, there is a specific um, HTTP service um, layer, and then followed by an application layer, and then followed by a database layer, which all of them work hand in hand to provide the the best service possible for the the user. So. Um, that's the, the the big introduction. Uh, today I'm not going to ask you to do any um, um, any exercises or activities. Um, uh, we will all we will combine a lot of these activities into one uh, big lab or, uh, for this uh, session. Um, today the main topic is going to be the IP addressing. Um, this is one of the topics I think is important um, from a general understanding perspective. Um, mainly because um, as uh, VLSI designers you will be uh, in situations where you have to uh, make sure that uh, how to debug um, a network and probably you may have to also um, uh, correct some of the issues uh, that are in the network. Um, and all of them like by remotely logging in and then you may also even do some little bit of uh, system administration. Again uh, as I mentioned earlier this entire course is not uh, uh, to make you a system administrator. This still focuses on the usage of uh, the systems. Um, so we will only uh, be doing that but um, I still wanted to give you like a little bit of uh, basics on uh, the IP addressing so that um, you are well prepared like I mean if somebody says that hey this is your network address or this network is not working or the subnet is not working or something like that then you know what they mean and how you can uh, give them that uh, information. 
So um, with that introduction, um, let's go into the IP address thing. So the first question that we ask is, what is the purpose of uh, IP address? Um, what do we need uh, the IP address? So IP address is uh, unique identification of uh, the source. Uh, so sometimes, like you can use it uh, for security and policy based filtering of data. What this means is um, you can avoid certain uh, or you can bounce back certain sources of uh, um, there from where the service request is originating. Uh, the other one is uh, when, when it originates from a low level server or a high level server, based on that you can set priority and you can set um, um, what which data needs to be taken in and which data needs to be rejected. And then uh, the IP address also provides a uh, uh, way to uh, uniquely identify a destination so that the networks know where to send the data to. So you need to have an IP address to receive the data um, while as a receiver of data you will be checking the IP address of whichever the message that is coming. Um, so in fact. Um, the network administrators use the IP address in a very effective way this way. Um, they try to block certain uh, network. Um, they identify the networks based on their IP address so that they can put it in the block table so that even if you try to go there, they can block it. Um, typical example as uh, you know like pawn sites and things like that basically where um, you cannot get into like from a public computer or a university computer. Or even like a work computer. The the reason is uh, the IT department knows the IP addresses of uh, those systems and then effectively block from any messages going to those IP addresses. Um, usually, this is um, uh, a network independent format. Uh, that's what uh, you need, so that uh, it is not tied to a given network. Um, and one of the reasons why internet became popular is also because of this um, feature where it is not tied to any network, any particular type of network. So it is basically IP can be over anything. So um, this is another uh, key thing to remember. Um, So what does it do actually, so let's look at that, so the IP address identifies a machine connection to a network, so whenever um, a network receives a message it knows essentially like I mean which machine actually originated the request, there are no like spurious requests uh, coming into the network which can uh, destabilize that network. When you move from uh, machine to machine, uh, um, even like I mean physically moving a particular machine from one network to another network, you it requires a change of the IP addresses. Um, so, in fact, uh, this uh, has become an issue because, um, uh, say, like I mean. Um, you actually change providers of uh, internet service and then suddenly new provider comes in and then uh, you have to now your IP address is all different and uh, everything else is different. Um, that is okay but um, when you buy a new computer or when you change a router in your home system you don't want everything to be different. So there are ways to actually um, also control this one. Uh, there is like dynamic IP allocation that is what um, most of the internet companies do because they know that uh, the service is to just one node but uh, inside that node if you change anything they, they do not really want to know because they are as long as they can uniquely identify that uh, it is you who is originating all the messages uh, they are okay with it. So uh, this dynamic IP addressing actually has become pretty uh, popular. So up to your point it may be a static one but then inside that you can make it into a dynamic. 
and then uh, TCP IP uses a unique 32-bit uh, address and let us look at how they use this 32-bit uh, address uh, in the next slide. Um, so it is a 32-bit number um, divided as 4 octet number so it is uh, 8 bits. Um, so the, the representation will be like you can say 133.27.162.125 that is uh, one IP address. So that is the decimal representation uh, in binary you can also like uh, represent this um, into the, the following um, here you can say basically that um, it is uh, 1000 0, 0, 0, um, 0, 1, 0, 1. So that represents this uh, 133 uh, it is a single uh, number and then 27 is represented as the 11011 and then uh, 162 is again 101 and then same for 125 which is 0111101 sometimes this is also represented in hexadecimal. Uh, for example, the same number can be like 85, 1B, A2, 7B. Uh, in Linux systems, typically, like I mean, people uh, represent their IP addresses in the or they call out the IP addresses in the hexadecimal. Um, in fact, there are some commands which we will talk about in the later part of the um, this lecture. Uh, the commands to get data um, uh, from the from your machine. And see, like I mean, how they are represented. So um, uh, we'll we'll talk about that uh, later. So now let's look at uh, how these uh, IP addresses are allocated. As I already mentioned, uh, there is a static IP address, which is what was very very prevalent uh, until they ran out of the address space, and then they started doing this dynamic, and then. Dynamic also used to solve certain issues where um, the providers uh, don't want to know, like I mean, how many how many computers are connected to the network. I mean, they want to know, like I mean, in terms of the number, but they don't really care which ones are connected. Um, uh, today, um, in a typical home, you can find uh, up to like maybe ten devices connecting into the internet uh, in various forms. Um, Sometimes I mean they are all like connected together um, um, very easily like I mean you can count your, your TVs uh, where the TVs are connected your all your mobile phones are connected uh, the computers are connected printers are connected um, I do not know maybe even like your alarm clock um, whichever one you can think of they can easily be connected to the network oh yeah network storage is another big thing right now so that is another um, attached uh, storage. Um, so now if you add up all these things 10, 15 easily it will cause that number and uh, so the key question is uh, how do you provide uh, unique addresses to all of them. So let us look at uh, how that is done, uh, the how the, the IP addresses are allocated. So here um, actually like I mean there can be like um, two different IP address structures one is the private IP address um, they range uh, from um, 10 to 8 essentially like I mean 10 or 8 and then like 10.000.10.0.0.0 to 10.255.255.255 which is the maximum 8 bit number um, and um, also like I mean the other one is 192 and 168 um, 192.168 or 16 that is another uh, set of uh, private IP addresses and then 172.16 uh, or and uh, that is another one too. So um, here it is listed here basically like uh, 192.168.0.0 .0 through all the way and then uh, this 172. Um, dot 16 that is again goes to 172 dot 31 dot, uh, 255, dot 255. So uh, this um, these IP address ranges essentially like I mean so you can uh, look at your 
um, machines inside the network they will all have like um, these IP addresses being like 192 or 172. Um, but the public address space is mostly like I mean it's, uh, there are many authorities assigning these numbers. Some of these authorities are this Ripe, Arin, Afrinic, etc. Um, or there are local internet registries essentially they are also known as LIRs. Um, in uh, United States there are several companies which allocate this uh, addresses. Uh, right now like I mean even like new uh, companies have started allocating these addresses. Um, so um, essentially like your, your provider actually like uh, has taken a block of address from uh, one of these uh, authorities and then they start uh, allocating it to their customers as well. Um, So essentially like I mean the, the bottom line is um, you have a small block uh, from whatever range that you have and you subnet your networks. So essentially uh, you can think of uh, the larger internet as a hierarchical element where um, you may just get like one address space and then this you make that one from one address you create a subnet which uh, has more of them. So and then you create the subnet of subnet and then you take that uh, uh, wider. So once you have this thing like I mean you do not have to broadcast that with in a wide range essentially. So um, So now let us look at uh, how do we address in the internet works. Um, so the the problem that we face is essentially like I mean now we have more than one physical network because there are all the subnets uh, and they are in different locations large number of computers. So we need a structure in the IP addresses. So to define the structure we need to have uh, one portion which defines the network uh, or the network part. Um, this defines which uh, identifies which network in the internet network that this belongs to um, which is basically the internet. And then the second part of the address is the host that uh, identifies the host on that network. So every network has an address that is what uh, this uh, the first part is and then the second part is okay in this network where does this host fit in. So now we, uh, we talk about the 32 bit now um, this uh, how do we divide this into hierarchical IP address hierarchical division. So the network part defines the physical network that it belongs to. And then the host is identifies which is the host that is connected to that one. So here, like I mean, we saw that in the previous slide, there are these uh, four numbers. Um, the the octets basically the first three octets now determine the um, the network, and then the last one determines what the host is. So um, essentially like I mean even though like I mean we talk about this um, the boundary can be really anywhere um, it may not be like even a multiple of uh, 8 bits because uh, if you run out of the address space or uh, the original ones we can actually like allocate more to the host if there are more hosts on the network. Um, and that how we determine what is the, um, the, the network part. And what is the host part is the is the um, is by using a network mask. So let's look at what the network mask is. Uh, the network mask help define which bits are used to describe the network part, and which are used for the hosts. So um, there are different representations again for the network mask. Um, you can define the network mask as uh, just a decimal dot notation 
which is uh, 255.255.224.0 this is one of the examples. So here you can see that actually like um, the the network is up to here that is uh, the first uh, 8, 16, the uh, 21 uh, sorry 19 bits and then the the remaining all the zeros are the the, the host part. So the 19 bits first 19 bits uh, uh, represent the network and then the remaining ones uh, in the in this um, like 13 bits represent the, the host uh, address. Uh, binary form that is what uh, shown here and then the hectadecimal is also which you can describe the mask which is F F F F E 0 So um, typically like I mean uh, your network will once it assigns uh, the once you become a part of the network and the host uh, the whatever your machine parts becomes a part of the network the network will assign a mask essentially based on how many computers in, in the network are in the network uh, based on that it assigns a mask and then uh, the way that uh, we generate the IP addresses is just a simple binary AND of the 32 bit IP address with the 32 bit net mask and then we um, get the the network part of the address. So here a simple uh, binary uh, AND will provide uh, the first um, 19 bits which is essentially the network and then the remaining ones will be the host. So you can use just a simple AND function to um, actually uh, separate out the, the network and the network address or network identification and the, um, the host identification. Let's look at the classless uh, addressing. IP address with the subnet mask uh, defines the range of addresses in the block. Essentially, um, so um, so once you have these uh, subnet masks. Uh, essentially like I mean the 10.1.1.32 or 28 um, that defines the range from 10.1.1.22 32 to um, 10.1.1.47 uh, with the ABO subnet mask. Uh, so here the 10.1.1.32 is the network address and then uh, the 47 becomes the broadcast address. And then uh, the 33 to 46, the the range in between, uh, they can be assigned to other uh, hosts or as a other space. Uh, actually, they, they can be assigned as a network addressing um, network addresses that you can assign to. So now let's look at um, how the computers um, forward the packets based on these uh, addresses. So um, when the the packets are received, the computers can only send packets directly to other computers only if they are on the subnet. If the destination is not part of the subnet, which is identified by the the network address, then they are sent to a gateway. Um, the gateway is kind of you can think of as a central router. Um, and that actually sends it to um, the other um, networks. So gateway is something that communicates between the two networks, and then uh, within the network, the packets can be sent directly. And then the default router option in uh, slash etc slash uh, rc dot config uh, con sets the default gateway for the system. So this is one thing that you can find out you can uh, do a less on this uh, file to see where is your uh, default gateway and what or what and what is the machine that is uh, default gateway. Um, and then basically like I mean IP forwarding on a free um, BSD box 
this is turned on with the gateway enable option uh, in the etc uh, rp dot uh, con um, otherwise the box will not forward the packets from one interface to another so um, Uh, let's look at uh, the DNS itself. Um, so DNS is uh, what is the domain name system. Um, there, the computers use the IP addresses, but the again, like I mean, for um, humans, it's very hard to remember those IP addresses. So uh, DNS provides a, a reverse mapping of the IP addresses to the machine names, and uh, vice versa. I mean, actually, like it goes both ways. So um, this is uh, something that basically uh, we can look into and then we can see like what is the, the domain name uh, of a particular IP or if you have a uh, domain name then you can also convert it to what is the address of that. Um, so this is the one this is one of the lists there uh, when the computers are moved between the networks. The IP addresses will change, but their domain names, uh, the names remain the same. Um, so, like I mean, we saw like uh, the cat or whatever the the name of the machine itself, that always remains the same in whichever network that goes into. So, the way that we keep it uh, that way is uh, to use a domain name system file. So, the DNS file, if you look at it, that will have the name. Listed, and uh, we can easily see, like, I mean, what is the map of this, uh, the, uh, this uh, particular um, uh, computer, this particular machine. So, um, let us look at uh, some of the useful commands that we can use to um, uh, navigate the network. Uh, here I am actually uh, talking about you know, the commands. Um, again, uh, the commands actually follow the same uh, uh, higher same syntax that uh, we all have uh, all there, all are familiar with by now, which is uh, the command name followed by argument followed by uh, uh, sorry command name followed by options followed by the arguments. Um, so the first command is uh, ping command. Uh, ping is used to send this ICMP ETHO request to network hosts. So essentially, uh, it is actually a command by itself. Uh, basically, it instructs the receiving computer to send a, um, an ETHO of um, the the ping, basically. So, um, for example, if you want to see like I mean, the network, if a particular machine is uh, alive or dead you can use a ping and then you use the ping command to I mean or you send the ping command to that machine so that if the machine receives that ping command then it sends you back a message saying that hey I received it so then you know that actually uh, that machine is alive if it is not this uh, the, it can go on pinging for a while and then, then you know that either the network uh, is uh, having an undue delay or if that machine is uh, the machine that you are trying to reach is uh, dead. So um, typically we do this uh, before we send uh, an FTP request. Uh, we, we studied the FTP like in uh, the last uh, lecture, uh, which is the file transfer protocol for transferring files between systems. Um, and uh, so doing that, uh, actually we will be studying in more detail in the, the next uh, section. Uh, as to how how FTP can be done and what are the different uh, configurations for FTP, but uh, the bottom line is um, in order to uh, uh, the thing thing is used as a prelude to doing an FTP, just so that I mean you can see whether the machine is alive, and then you can send the request. Next, that is another command. Uh, this prints out the network connections. The routing tables, the interface stats, etc. Um, we know that uh, the the all these things, all these terminologies we studied in the previous lecture. The routing tables are the tables where um, um, the machine knows okay how the IP address are mapping and what are the closest distances and 
so how to quickly reach the the destination essentially like i mean if uh, it receives the packet from the, this particular uh, uh, computer or this particular ip address what should be the next ip address those kind of uh, that kind of information is in the routing table um, the network connections again it uh, prints out the nearest neighbors who are all connected and uh, how they are connected um, and also like the interface stats like what kind of ports uh, are open uh, where which ports can be used for communication things like that if config is uh, a command that is used for um, configuration um, of um, networks So in uh, if config actually um, you can configure the network interface so, um, there are good examples if you do a man or if config uh, you should be able to get um, a lot of good uh, information about this, uh, this one. Uh, trace route is uh, as a command to print the uh, the route that packets are taking uh, to the network host. Um, so as you know, like the internet itself is a, um, it's a, it's a big aggregation of uh, the network hardware. Uh, connected together by various gateways. So we saw the, the gateway example and the, the machines. Um, so the tracking the the route that uh, some packet is taking, uh, some packet is following, um, it, it it may be like very difficult. So um, here essentially, like I mean, the, this uses the IP protocol uh, time to live field. Uh, one of the fields that we talked about um, when we talked about the IP address itself, um, and then it uh, from there it uh, attempts to see like um, uh, the the response from each of the gateway along the path, uh, so that it understands what the path it takes to reach the destination. So here essentially the, the, the mandatory parameter is the uh, destination host name or the IP address, uh, the IP number, all the other ones uh, basically um, it, it, um, you, you do not have to specify it and assume some default and give you the result. Um, here the usually the, it also sends out a, a probe uh, datagram. Uh, we know like what the datagram is essentially like that will be specified in the IP layer and below. Um, that datagram is uh, typically 40 byte data um, and basically uh, um, but given like I mean uh, if it is more than uh, sometimes it can be increased uh, by specifying a pocket link. Um, so um, again I, I will ask you to just uh, do a man of a trace route to get like more uh, information regarding the uh, this particular command. Usually it, it, it gives you like I mean uh, a bunch of uh, um, posts it gives you the various uh, and it, it gives you as a DNS table essentially the code. it gives you the host name and its IP address and then it also gives you like I mean how much time it is. Um, Taking like I mean, how many hops uh, each one is taking, um, and then what are the what is the, the time that it is taking in each of the um, the the holes itself. So some of the um, the LSS based commands use these uh, commands as, uh, as uh, uh, to call out certain things and to, uh, to understand certain um, uh, functions essentially. And the last command that we will talk about is the TCP dump. 
TCP dump dumps the traffic on a network. Um, again, this um, um, it uh, the TCP dump actually uh, prints out the headers of the packets on the network uh, network interface that match the boolean expression. So. Uh, um, you can also like um, give this uh, boolean expression the, again it, this goes through like I mean that same uh, um, the options followed by the um, uh, options followed by the, the, the argument uh, here essentially like I mean specify the options um, and then it, it dumps out that. Um, So um, the TCP dump may not be a command that you can actually run it un unless you have a super user per permission or, or a system administrator permission. Uh, but you can still uh, type man uh, TCP dump and see like I mean what it generates. Um, it should generate a whole bunch of uh, information essentially. Um, um, so and there are various modes that you by which you can dump uh, information. So if you want to uh, print all the packets arriving at a destination, um, you can give um, the TCP dump on that particular uh, host. Um, and then you can also say like I mean okay uh, you want some preferential pro, um, um, uh, preferential uh, uh, packets only like show certain things basically or you can also say like okay this I want to see whether uh, what is the traffic between two hosts. So again th th these are the commands that are mainly used by the system administrators to troubleshoot a uh, lot of these issues. I just wanted to give you a flavor of uh, how they do it and then what kind of thing goes on underneath. Um, I hope this is uh, uh, useful for you. Um, Again, uh, I think uh, this, this is pretty much the end of uh, today's lecture. Um, we will be picking up from this point in the next one. Um, again, to summarize, today we mainly talked about the IP addressing. Um, we talked about uh, the uh, how the IP addresses are formed, why the IP addresses are needed. Uh, the 32 bit uh, IP address, uh, there is also the address of uh, the IP uh, or the address of your uh, computer uh, which essentially constitutes two, two pieces of information. One piece of information is the subnet where it belongs to, the address of the subnet and then the second piece is uh, its own host ID inside that subnet and um, even though this is represented as four. Um, 8 bit numbers or 4 octet numbers uh, in reality the the network address could be some bits of information and then the host ID can be a different uh, set of bits they all need to add together to the 32 bit but uh, in inside the 32 bit however um, the partition is up to you um, and so typically like that is determined by this. Um, the, the subnet mask that we talk about or the network mask um, essentially like uh, by just looking at the network mask you can figure out how many bits um, are the addresses, how many bits are uh, the part of the network address and how many bits are part of uh, your host uh, address. So uh, this I hope this is useful and then we also saw some commands uh, towards the end as uh, how the system administrators use uh, these tools effectively to manage the uh, system. Um, again I just wanted to just remember if you remember one command that is the ping command which you will be using um, many more times. Uh, all the other commands are very very sparingly used uh, uh, by us uh, in this in our field. Again thanks a lot, thanks for listening. Um, we will pick it up from pick it up from this point in the next lecture, uh, thanks once again.